welcome to our video all about diversity in plant cells. This is part of our module two, part six series on cell division, cell diversity and cell differentiation. And what we're doing in this video is having a look at specification reference 2.1.6 H, how cells of multicellular organisms are specialized for particular functions. In our previous video, we had a look at obviously the diversity in animals and the specialized cells that we needed to know for the OCR specification there. In this video, we're going to focus in on the plants. So the first type of specialized cell we need to be aware of as far as our plants goes are the palisade cells. And these are the first kind of plant cell you'd have learned to draw all the way back in year seven. So the palisade cells are all about carrying out photosynthesis. So we find them just underneath the upper epidermis of the leaf. And what they tend to be in terms of their shape is these long cylindrical cells. The whole idea of having them in this shape is that we can pack lots of them in side by side just under that epidermis, which is a transparent layer at the top. We then have our vacuole in the center there, which is very large. And the idea is that it's going to push those chloroplasts, which contain the photosynthetic pigments, really close to the edge of the cell. So whole idea here is to make sure that everything is set up perfectly for photosynthesis. If the chloroplasts are close to the edge of the cell, that means we've got a shorter diffusion distance for the carbon dioxide which is going to be entering to get to those chloroplasts. The next adaptation they've got is having lots of these chloroplasts. They are going to be the site of photosynthesis and therefore if we've got lots of chloroplasts we have obviously lots of sites that photosynthesis can take place. The other key feature that we need to make ourselves aware of for our palisade cells is they've got these threads in our cytoskeleton with their motor proteins to move the chloroplasts. And it might sound strange that the chloroplasts are going to move in the cell, but when we've got this high light intensity, then actually you don't want the chloroplasts really close to the surface. You want them a little bit further away. Whereas if we've got a low light intensity, we need the chloroplast to be as close to the surface as possible to obviously capture as much of that light as is coming to that leaf. So the ability to move those chloroplasts using the cytoskeleton and the motor proteins associated with it is critical to the functioning of the leaf itself. Second type of specialized cell we're going to look at are the guard cells. And the guard cells are ones that are going to be controlling that opening and closing of the stomata, those little pores on our leaves. Typically, these are going to be found on the lower epidermis, not always, but most cases are on the lower epidermis. And what we find is that these guard cells contain chloroplasts, but they don't have the enzyme necessary for the second stage of photosynthesis. So because of that, these cells are not going to be carrying out photosynthesis themselves, because if they lack an enzyme, clearly they can't carry out that process. Now, when we actually have a look at these guard cells, we can see in the little diagram at the bottom that when they're open, then they've swollen up. OK, they are turgid at that point, whereas when they are closed, then they're obviously flaccid. When it comes to looking at a light microscope image, then we can pick out our guard cells. Here it is. And in that central point there, that is the stomata. So make sure that you can identify them from light microscope images. They are quite obvious. They look kind of like a pair of green lips, really. So you should be able to pick them out quite easily. Let's have a look then at how these guard cells actually work. First thing is that they're going to utilize that light energy to actually generate ATP. Now, ATP is going to be very important in our guard cells because it's going to be used in this active transport process. And hopefully we remember that anything that is an active process requires ATP. So we're going to use active transport to move potassium ions from the epidermal cells into the guard cells. And as those potassium ions are moved into the guard cells, that will lower the water potential. So what we're going to see is we're going to have a lower water potential in the guard cells compared to the epidermal cells. And as a result of that, water is going to move into the guard cells by osmosis. 
because if we think back to our earlier work on osmosis, then that is just the movement of water from that area of high water potential to the area of lower water potential. So from the epidermal cells into the guard cells. If that was just happening in a cell that had an equal thickness of cell wall all the way around, we wouldn't get the opening of the stomata that we need. So the guard cells actually have this thicker region on the inside of the actual guard cell itself. So when we have a little look, we can see that there is this thicker wall on the cell wall on the inner parts than the outer edges. So that as water enters, the cell is going to swell, but because we've got that thicker edge on the inside, it bulges outwards. And as a result of that, it opens that little pore, the stomata in the middle. In terms of why the stomata need to open, that is going to be the region that allows gas exchange to occur. So we need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. So we've got to have a method of getting carbon dioxide into the cells itself. So the stomata will open, carbon dioxide diffuses through the stomata and then into the palisade cells. And the whole idea about this is that we're going to maintain this steep concentration gradient to keep the carbon dioxide moving through that way. We're also going to find that the oxygen we've produced in photosynthesis will diffuse out of those palisade cells through the stomata to the surroundings. The only other substance we need to concern ourselves with moving through the stomata is water vapour in that process of transpiration. The third type of specialised plant cell we need to know about are the root hair cells. So because these are root hair cells, clearly we're going to find them in the roots. They are actually the outer layer of these young roots. They're basically a form of epidermal cells that's got this little projection, like a little hair sticking out. And the whole idea behind this is to increase the surface area. And hopefully we remember from all of the work we've done, increasing surface area means that we've then got a larger area through which to actually absorb those different substances. In the case of our root hair cells, that's going to be water and mineral ions. In terms of the process that we're looking at here for the mineral ions, it's active transport. So what we see is mineral ions are going to be actively transported into the root hair cells because we actually have this lower concentration of those mineral ions in the soil than inside the cells. So we need to use active transport to move obviously against that concentration gradient. Now, when those mineral ions are transported into those cells, water potential is going to be lowered, which then means water is going to follow by osmosis because that will then move down that water potential gradient from the area of higher water potential in the soil to the lower water potential within those cells. In terms of specializations of our root hair cells, we are going to have special carrier proteins in the plasma membrane of those cells for that process of active transport. We also obviously need ATP for that active transport process. The final type of cells that we're going to talk about at this point, and we'll visit them briefly now, and we will obviously look at them in a lot more detail in module three, are xylem and phloem. So xylem and phloem form what we call the vascular tissue in the plants. This is where we're going to be transporting substances through the plant, kind of like its little circulatory system, if you like. Now, the xylem is all to do with transporting water and minerals. So remember, we can just go with our nice little alphabet reminder. So we've got water in the xylem. So W for water, X, Y, the xylem. So we've got water and obviously those dissolved mineral ions will be transported through the xylem there. And then the phloem is going to be transporting the products of photosynthesis. So we've got our pH of phloem and our pH of our photosynthesis. So that's things like the sucrose. But what we're going to do is have a look at these in a lot more detail in module three when we have a look at the process of translocation. So this is just our introduction to these are specialized cells we find in plants. Our video in module three will be having a look at them in a lot more detail and the processes involved. 
as always i hope you found this video useful and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see when the next video is uploaded and of course head on over to the website where you'll find a range of other materials to help you in your a-level biology studies